All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, I'm currently sat at my desk in the office and I've just had delivered a very interesting car. It's a 2002 Mercedes CL500 that I've bought for just £1,500. Let me tell you how this all came about. I got a message on Instagram about two weeks ago from a guy named Chris, and he bought this CL500 about six months ago from a CL owners club on Facebook. He bought this from a guy down in Southampton and it had a good number of issues with it. So Chris was hoping that he could fix it up himself and, you know, turn it into a bit of a project car. They're such beautiful cars, these. And Chris, like me, was a child of the 90s. So this is just one of those, one of those cars that you'd always see in American movies. For example, Stifler's mum drove one. There you go. Bit of CL trivia for you there. I know what you're all thinking, so you don't even need to say it. I needed another project car, like, like the BBC needs another scandal. I've got project cars coming out of my ears at the moment, so the very last thing I need is another costly project. But anyway, at £1,500, I couldn't really say no. I really don't want to do this, but absolutely worst, worst, worst case scenario, if I've got to sell this for parts, I'm pretty sure it's worth 1,500 quid. So I think my money's safe. Famous last words. Cool. So I thought today I'll give you a quick tour of it, show you everything that's wrong with it, and then hopefully by the end of this video, I'll have it all sorted and back on the road. When you see it, you'll realize that's quite a tall order. Let's go have a look, shall we? I should have probably warned you really, it's a nice day today, so. I've got my legs out. Got my car clean this morning as well. Look at this weather. That was me thinking summer was over. I thought hurricane season was over. Such a good looking car, this CL. Here you go. Feast your eyes on this. It's got a burr walnut trim with a wooden steering wheel. Now, where should we start? Because there are quite a few bad bits. The wheels are tiny and a bit scuffed. The tyres are okay though. Typical of a Merc of this era, which I just think is totally unacceptable, is corrosion. There are rust spots everywhere. And on the bottom of the door, that's another common area for them to go. Got some lacquer peel there. Rust, rust, rust. Broken indicator there. They're not too expensive, in fairness. Now, you'll all be yelling at your screens for me to, as the Americans say, part it out, to sell it for spares, because it's probably a little bit too far gone, this. But I just can't help myself, can I? Oh, the other good thing is the plate's with it. I know it's only worth 250 quid, but the plate is with it. So, I mean, we've got damage here to the bottom part of the bumper. More rust spots there on the bonnet. I'm just... Too much of a romantic for my own good. I just want that to be back on the road. Again, that tire's all right. Looks like a part worn because there's a there's a mark on it. This is kind of this sums up a car like this, doesn't it? Now it's not worth an awful lot. Someone's putting part worn tires on a on a CL500. Got more rust around this wheel arch, and someone's had a go at painting that themselves. See all the lines in it. That brake disc looks a little bit grim, doesn't it? More corrosion up here. Around the back, we've got some gaffer tape. Now this central brake light is broken. So rather than let water in, Chris has just covered it with duct tape. So I need to try and find a new one of those. I just really want to save it. I don't know, what do you think? In fact, don't tell me. Don't tell me what you think. I'd rather not know. So, they're the bad bits that you know about. In addition to that, I've only got one key, not a shred of service history, and it's had 12 owners. Then again, it does have a sunroof, so, you know. Nope. Oh, there we go. Slightly temperamental. Take a look at that interior though. It's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. Love these silk covers. It's just a shame that this era of Mercedes was a real low point in terms of quality. Because, I mean, look at things like this. I know it's 20 years old now, this car, but it's just not good enough. This car will have cost the best part of 100,000 pounds competing against things like Bentleys and stuff. And yet now, all these years later, 
there are loads of faults. Oh, my steering column works. I mean, that's the other good thing. It's only done 78,000 miles. It's quite low, isn't it? I mean, if that's to be believed. Oh yes, the old V8. So we've got lots of malfunctions here. Reverse light check lamp. We've got an engine light on, an ABS light. ABS malfunction, visit workshop. Okay, danker. BAS, I'm not sure what that is. What is that? Brake assist or something? Display defective, visit workshop. Coolant, visit workshop. Sounds like this car wants to go to the workshop, doesn't it? ESP, yeah, okie dokie. Now what's interesting, when I checked this out using car vertical, it all checked out okay, apart from one obvious issue. Let me show you what I found. So it is a Mercedes CL class from 2002, never been stolen, the odometer's fine, never been rolled back, and there's no recorded accident damage, so that's fine. But we do have an amber warning here for financial and legal status. So, the last recorded MOT was done at 78,000 miles. If we look at the MOT history, it's fairly consistent every single year. I mean, when this car was 10 years old, it only done 55,000 miles. I'm not sure how or why it's had so many owners, to be honest. I'm guessing the first one will have been very wealthy and had it for probably three or four years and serviced it. So there must be some, some service history somewhere. Now, here's the issue. This is why we've got an amber warning. It failed its last MOT in August. Oh, hang on, that was August 22. It was manufactured in 2002, first registered in October 2002, so it's a 52 reg. Uh, okay. I had a license plate change. So the original plate is Bravo Whiskey 52 OBV, obviously. So it's originally a Birmingham car. So in 2014, it went over to this plate. So it hasn't been on the road then since it was MOT'd in April 17. Then obviously when it ran out in April 18, it wasn't done again. Here's the issue then. So in August 22, so over a year ago, it failed its MOT on the SRS system, uh, the supplementary restraint system, warning lamp indicates a fault. Plastic covers fitted, obscuring some components. Offside stop lamp's not working. Windscreen washer provides insufficient washer liquid. That's an easy repair. Various points of corrosion. Yep, we can see that. Offside rear direction indicator not working. Offside rear position lamp not working. And near side rear coil spring fractured or broken. That's the weird thing because I don't think these have coil springs. I thought they were on, well, they're on that ABC system, aren't they? I don't quite know what that means. There's definitely a story with this car then, isn't there? I'd love to know more about it. It's a weird one. I'm guessing maybe over the last five or six years, this has changed hands that many times with people trying to fix it. All the time it's just waited for one idiot to get hold of it who will massively overspend on it. By the way, if you want to do one of these vehicle checks for yourself, then use my promo code HIGHPEAK for 10% off or click the link below in the video description. It's really easy to use. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg or the VIN, and it checks databases in 35 different countries. It's a really thorough check and it checks hundreds of millions of cars. And it's really important that you do one of these checks before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorbike. What else can I tell you about it then? Oh, I've just spotted a wood screw there through the door. I don't think it would have left the factory like that. We've got Bose surround. It really would have been some car in its day, this. I love this wooden steering wheel. We've got, by the looks of it, some, some lights out here on the speedo as well. Sounds lovely though. And that old V8 is quite reliable, isn't it? The actual engine itself, it's everything else that can go wrong. Now, I suppose, look at the, look at the hinges on this door. So impressive. I don't know whether this has got soft clothes or not, but it, it isn't working. Let's try and raise it, shall we? Are we going up? Are we going up? Oh, we have lift off. Well, that seems to work. Oh, there we go. It is creaking like the final moments of the Titanic. ABC Sport, this should sort of lower us down and hunker us down a little bit. Working. Sunroof. 
works, kind of. What a beautiful day. Ah, very good. Right, so some things work. My air conditioning, let's try this. That works as well, actually. My radio? Mm, nope, not so much. We've got a, is that a locking wheel nut and a cigarette lighter? You have to have the hands of a child to use this. No, nope. I think we'll leave that in there. Now in here, look at the quality of this. It's really poor, isn't it? Now Chris was quite upfront about all this car's faults. So, look at the double glazed, double glazed windows. So, my driver's side rear window doesn't work. There are some issues with this. Oh, it's working now. It wasn't working a minute ago. There could be a dodgy wire or something behind all this. What do they call it? Is it the SAM unit, like the, the car's ECU? It is very complicated on these. Let's look around it. Have a look in the boot. Oh, there we go. Look at the size of the battery. He did tell me as well he put a new battery on it because, because the car has got so many little faults with it, he thought he wanted to eliminate them being battery related. So he put a brand new battery on, hoping that it would wipe out some of the faults, and it didn't. It's like a piece of licorice there that I found. Don't quite know what that is. Oh, dear. No idea. I think we'll leave that where it was, shall we? Pretend I didn't pull it out. Look at that big lump. So I've got no idea either when this was last serviced. Which is a little concerning, must admit. Now there's no MOT on this, so it won't go far, but we'll drive it around this car park, I think. Keep keep dropping my phone out my pocket today. It just, it's crying out for some TLC, this thing. It's just like being in my old S-Class, this. And that's what this car basically is, isn't it? It's an S-Class Coupe. I do like this interior, though. I so hope I can save this car. Lots of warnings. Something on the near side rear there is broken or hanging off. It doesn't sound right at all, does it? Hmm. Lots of creaking and squeaking. Child, aren't I? A child. Steering feels a bit notchy as well like it's crying out for a power steering fluid change. It just feels like the column's the shape of a 50 pence piece, do you know what I mean? A little bit, a little bit notchy, not fluid. It does sound like a broken spring, that, which is odd. It doesn't have springs, this. Don't think, anyway. Ah, uh, what am I gonna do with this? What am I going to do? I think I'm gonna get this down to my workshop, let them check it over, plug it into their machine, try and diagnose some of these faults, and see if it'll pass an MOT. I think this could be a very, very costly repair, this. So I think I need to box clever. There is a knocking coming from the back. Sounds like there's somebody trapped in the boot. You've seen me do this a hundred times before now, where I'll buy a car and it needs loads of work and I'll spend hundreds, if not thousands of pounds on it. But what concerns me about this, they are quite rare now, so getting parts might be a bit of a, bit of a headache. But 78,000 miles on one of these is really nothing, is it? 
I'd drive something like this. It'd be quite cool, wouldn't it? Right, well, I think I'll leave it there. Let me get this down to my mechanic. Oh, six malfunctions. Get this down to my mechanic and take it from there. Try and work out whether it's worth fixing or breaking for bits. Catch up with you later. I hope I have good news for you later. I really do. Can't even let me out. See, they were working a second ago, and now that whole panel there isn't working. How strange. Yeah. That's not good, is it? Oh, we've only got three more functions now. Try it again, it might repair itself fully. Well, I've got some news for you on my beautiful Mercedes CL500. After we last spoke, I had it trailer down to my mechanics because there was no MOT on it. I hadn't had an MOT for three or four years. And then it sat there for four weeks, six weeks maybe, maybe longer. In fact, yeah, longer, eight weeks it sat there for. This is always the trouble really. My mechanics are always busy and I put a lot of work on them. So I just said, get to it when you can then really. Don't panic about trying to get it done, you know, within 24 hours because I know that's impossible. So when they tried to start it two months later, the battery was flat. So they left it on charge overnight and then it turned out the battery was goosed. It wouldn't take a charge. So they put a brand new battery on it and every time they took the booster pack off it, it would just die. So it needed a new alternator. So at that point, I thought, just stop what you're doing there. I don't want to, I don't want to go too far with it. I'd rather take it to SPR, which is probably where I should have taken it to on day one, really. But I didn't know how bad it was. So I thought I'd take it to SPR, my local Mercedes specialist, and have them look at it. So I got it recovered from my mechanics over to SPR in Stockport. And this is the message I've just this minute had from Sam at SPR. Are you ready for this? I've had an inspection of the CL. Give me a call when you're ready for some bad news. So what I've done, I was going to go down there myself and have a look at it and have a chat with him, but I'm, I'm out filming, I'm too busy right now. And I know that they're a business and it's on the ramp, so I didn't want to waste their time either. So I've asked my brother to go down there on my behalf. Here's what happened. So I just got off the phone to Matt, who's asked us to go down to SBR and speak to the guys down there about fixing the CL500. He's got a big long list apparently to see whether it's worth fixing or not. So. Wish us luck and we'll uh, see you when we get there. Right, so when the car came in, no no windows at all. So this is it. Somebody's done some uh, nice repairing wires to the door. So you need a door loom. It's actually not uncommon that. We used to change loads of them back in the day. Numerous lights on the dash, ABS lights on, ESP lights on. Engine management lights on. We've got the car's not charging, so there's something wrong with the alternator yeah. or something. Yeah. They're not the wheels for the car. But the wrong, wrong alloys or wrong. See how far in it is inside the wheel arch. It just looks a physically too small wheel. So I think they're not the right wheels for the car. What else? Electrical wise, intermittently won't start. It's got no horn. We've got the, one of the main control units under the bonnet isn't communicating with the rest of the car, which will be partly why all the windows aren't working, but that wiring's not gonna help. I better not leave it running too long, it'll run out of battery. And that's about it for floor work, really. Let's get it on the ramp. Oh yeah, that's smashed as well, isn't it? I think the, uh, so that's smashed, but on this side, it's, these have uh, auto dimming driver side glass and that's gone as well. Yeah. First thing we noticed before we went all the way up is, is the lift in the wheels. So there's a massive ball joint gone underneath. That's on both sides. On the back, the back brakes are seized. I can just about turn that one. I'll go around the other side. This one is um, sea solid. Oh, it's faded off a bit. So, C's calipers, disc pads, stuff like that. This wheel has got play in it as well. Side to side and up and down. This is where it gets interesting. I've tried to mark everything up so I don't forget, but the lift in the wheel is uh, these ball joints here, which goes into the strut. But I mean, you can see how rusty that is. And then these, 
these ball joints we've got playing. You might be able to see it on the camera, I don't know. See how that's going up and down? Yeah. It shouldn't move at all, and then this one's even worse. See the lift on that one? Yeah. So when I lift the wheel up and down, it's that one, and side to side is yeah. this one. And that's the same on both sides. But how that's fixed in to that strut, you've got these two little bolts. The chances of them coming out looking at the state of yeah. that strut, you've got to end up putting an arm on it and a full strut. Uh, this suspension arm's gone. This bush here, it's when you're driving along and you're braking, that's just popping out like that. That's the same forwards and backwards on, uh, on both sides. See that just hanging out. And amazingly, all, all this isn't on the MOT either. So they shouldn't move at all, should they? You should get a bit of play, but that, where that's separating, it, it shouldn't. Oh, wow. yeah. It should be just more like of a, a dampener, so as you're braking, it just takes the brunt of it. Uh, again, same on this, this one and this one, two arms. Uh, what else have we got? It's all rotten down here. Oh, wow. I've not even took this panel off because I think I'm just going to expose a load of holes. <laughs> uh, so all that's rotten down there. Yeah. We've got this here. This is all rotten in here. I mean, it might still be solid, but yeah. It's definitely a lot thinner than it should be. Yeah. Got brake pipes. These rear hoses are all split. So it's cracking there. Yeah. That sh shouldn't have any cracks in it at all. Just normal stuff. Exhaust bracket snapped off. That should be attached there, both sides. So that's, as you can see here. So this main pipe goes to the hydraulic strut and all, all that's corroding. It's not leaking, but it's not looking great. And if we follow the lines round on this side, it's all rotten there as well, but they're not leaking. I don't think hydraulic pipes are MOT failure unless it's leaking, unlike brake pipes. Just everywhere you look, I'm just peeling stuff off. So this spring is broken inside the strut but if you look in there you can see where it's it's come through so that you can't buy a spring for it you've got to buy a full strut and spring as a complete unit which is that so, yeah. two grand if you can't get the front ones out two grand two grand six grand these struts <laughs> without anything else i don't want to keep looking because i'll just keep finding more stuff <laughs> You can see all the scabs down the door here. Not that that's affecting how it drives, but... And then once you fix it, get it back on the road, you get to then want all the spec and everything that's extra in the car to work. So then you're going to start spending a fortune on that, aren't you? Yeah, so I've done a quick test, printed out all the stuff. So engine management light-wise, we've got... So these are the codes that have... Got yeah, to we've got an air pump fault. We've got an O2 sensor fault, and we've got an air mass sensor fault, yeah. and we've got the main electric fan mm. fault. So that sounds expensive straight away, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got a couple of passes, so not too bad, but this engine management light could be a nightmare yeah. slash expensive. I mean, from afar, it looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. There will be more stuff wrong. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right, sorted. Cheers then, pal. I'll uh, pass these over to Matt then, see what he thinks. Yeah. Yeah. What do I do with it now then? I knew it was a, a ropey example, that's why it was only 1,500 quid. I'm fine with that. But I was just hoping that for maybe 1,000 pounds or 1,500 pounds, I could get it back on the road. But that now doesn't seem like the case. So what do I do with it? What would you do with it? I don't want to spend four or 5,000 pounds on it because it's, it'll never be worth that. Then of course there's the cosmetic issues as well, not just mechanical, so what do I do? I suppose I could sell it for parts, uh, transport it back to the garage and do a, a blunt advert about how it needs to be trailed away and you know, blah blah blah. I could do that. It's a pity isn't it though, because we're 70,000 miles on the clock. The engine will go for another 200,000 miles easily. 
but the rest of it sadly won't. <sighs> so what do I do? What do I do? Well, I think I'm going to have to leave the video there. So let me know what you do in the comments below and I'll have a, a serious think about it. I need to do something with it. I don't like being beaten. Well, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. I'll leave the links below. And yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.